We can't borrow any more money. In fact, we really couldn't borrow any more money recently, so we started borrowing from our own pension funds. We owe them. That was Kevin Orr, Detroit's new emergency manager, appointed after Detroit's elected politicians spent all the money. Actually, they spent billions more than the city had. How Orr is supposed to get Detroit out of that mess without stripping workers of their pensions and health care is not clear. Ken Sikama is Michigan's former state majority leader. Uh, what's going to happen? A judge is basically going to push the reset button here. It'll be the largest city in America ever to go into bankruptcy, federal bankruptcy. and Which unions means stiff everybody we owe? Everybody that's owed money. The current workers, retirees, bondholders um, are, are going to have to get cut. Absolutely. This is a heavily unionized town. There's 47 separate public unions in the city of Detroit. In fact, some of the unions have, mem have the membership of only one. And it's hard for me to envision. Each one you have to negotiate with? Yeah, absolutely. A one-man union? It's a one-man union. Um, and I, I, I just don't think politically um, a union can go to its members and say, yeah, we agree to wage cuts or cuts to pensions or cuts to health care, which is why I think it ends up in front of a federal judge. And I think the manager, the emergency manager in Detroit, he might not say this to, to anybody. I think he prefers to be in Chapter 9. It's, uh, he has more power. So um, a, a judge can say to the unions, you, you know, you could protest all you want, but I want you in my courtroom 9 o'clock Monday morning. You get an hour to make your case, and then I'm going to make a decision. So I really think Kevin Orr prefers to be in Chapter 9. And how big a haircut? The pensions are $3.5 billion in the red. That means a union worker who thinks he's got 50000 a year might only get 30000 a year, 10000 a year? Well, the... Uh, the judge is going to make that decision in a, in a bankruptcy court. And, you know, I, I really, I, I, let me just say this. I, I have a great deal of sympathy for sort of the average pensioner or the average retiree because they're not really getting a lot of money. There are some egregious examples. And they did nothing wrong. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't negotiate the deals. They didn't underinvest in the pension fund. The, the general, Detroit has two pension funds, one for police and fire and one for sort of general employees, which is the larger one. That pension fund is a mess. 30% of the investments are in real estate investments that have never returned a profit. There's no accountability. So the political managers said, oh, let's invest in this, and it made no money. Well, you know, somebody's friend, someone's uncle, someone's cousin. Um, and, and that pension fund is under uh, investigation as we speak. I, I see that the, the board, pension board, paid $22,000 to send four trustees to Hawaii. And this, is, and this is at a time when the pension fund is headed for bankruptcy itself. So, but once again, you know, it's not the pensioner's fault. It's the fault of people who are mismanaging the fund. It's the fault of, you know, union contracts that the city could never afford. You know, but the politician says, I want to say yes, these guys will elect me, and when the, when the bomb hits, I'll be long gone. Or do they well, even think that way? Cities all over this nation deal with those kinds of problems. And the problem in the city of Detroit is the leaders never really confronted it and dealt with it. It was almost as if they were on remote control here or autopilot, thinking somebody was going to come in and bail them out over time. What's up with Detroit? The city's a mess. About two-thirds of its population left town. Whole neighborhoods are crumbling. Recently, special correspondent Kennedy walked through Detroit with community activists. That house over there right behind you is literally being consumed by weeds. That's one example of so many. Kirk Mays works for one of the community groups that's trying to clean neighborhoods up. This one needs it, despite signs like this one much of it looks like a garbage dump. Here's a garbage truck. I mean, that's good news, right? Absolutely, that's the good news. Um, but are they going to pick up all of this? I don't think so. What is the strangest, creepiest thing or things they found as they try and remove the blight and the trash? Well, the worst thing was an actual dead body. Oh. There was a dead body that was found over here. Boats, um, bowling balls, um, you name it, kitchen sinks, refrigerators, uh, of course, tires, um, the remnants of life. Many people left neighborhoods like these because there are so few basic services. Call 911, 
and the ambulance may not come. The reality is Detroiters pick themselves up and put themselves in their cars to take them all, their own selves to the hospital. And yet amidst the garbage and abandoned property, there is life. You see this house, it's got a nice motorcycle out front. How does this person hang on? Two things. One, they have hope. And two, they like their neighborhood. They found the homeowner. You've got empty lots next to you and empty houses across the street and another empty lot across the street. Right. What, uh, what keeps you here? Well, I want to stay here in the city and uh, I'm here. Do you ever worry about what happens in the empty houses and whether or not people are going to come after your stuff? Well, I kind of keep the lots cut, close the doors on the abandoned houses, stuff like that. You keep an eye on them? Yeah, you have to. Did you used to have neighbors? Yeah, mm-hmm. And people just... They just move out. Just gone. And this was typical of what you saw in Detroit, many places. It was really interesting. Neighborhood after neighborhood, you would see nice streets with nice homes. And a block away, it was these abandoned, burned out homes. And they were being devoured by the earth. Detroit is, is falling back into the earth. And that's not all bad news. <laughs> now, but you live Believe in Los it Angeles. Not. It's not so great. It has some problem areas. Oh, no, we big a difference for your show. We've been to some really problem areas and you see for sale signs. You see a lot of people moving out homes underwater. People kind of give up and walk away. But that's just for sale signs. This is literally civilized society devolving into the state of nature. This is what they talk about philosophers when they talk about the state of nature, the reversion. This is happening in Detroit. But you don't really see chaos. The state of nature does not give way to chaos. It's not necessarily going to be chaotic. In fact, we found what I like to call accidental libertarians, people who are becoming so self-reliant, they know that their city government has failed them utterly. The services aren't there. The police aren't going to show up. So they have collected into groups. They are crafting gardens. They are keeping bees. They've got chickens. They've got a lot of open land now. So, and, and you're going around with these community activists. They're all leftists, but they weren't saying, oh, we just need a new mayor, my guy in. No, they were not talking about civic solutions. They were talking about getting together as neighbors, mentoring kids so the kids have something to do so they don't fall into crime and making the best out of a situation that bad is, is not an acceptable word. It's something different from bad. And one other area where Kennedy found hope, politicians have driven Detroit so far into the tank that prices are now cheap. It's a good place to start from scratch. You can probably buy an empty lot here for anywhere from 100 to 500 bucks. Um, you could probably buy a house here from anywhere from 500 bucks to $10,000. Kennedy checked out this abandoned house just a few blocks from Gross Point, where the rich people live. The house had been gutted by thieves. If you can see, like, new flooring, and obviously, you know, they've taken everything out. They've yes. taken all the metal windows out. The appliances are gone. For $1,500, you could buy this house. Right, and you could fix it up. It's really incredible, you know. You think about first-time homeowners, you could literally own a house for $1,500, which is what a lot of people pay in rent. That's true. So are you going to move there? If I didn't have kids, I would absolutely move there. And I, I would tell people, if you are an urban survivalist, if you have had any desire to get into urban farming, move to Detroit. There's plenty of land. The people there are so infectious. I really enjoyed my time there because it was like surveying a war zone populated by saints. They were really awesome. They're banding together. And if you want to raise chickens and bees, Detroit is the bee's knees.